Number five on this list is the whale fish. This fish is like a legendary Pokemon when it comes to how rare it is. Live Science says the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute released footage in August showing a bright orange female whalefish around 6,600 feet deep offshore of Monterey Bay, California. Very little is known about this bizarre fish because of the three drastically different appearances of the juveniles, which are called tape tails, males, which are called big nose fish, and females, which are called whale fish. The three forms look so different that scientists originally thought that they were three different species. This shape shifting transformation from juvenile to mature females is believed to be one of the most extreme among vertebrates. Whalefish have rarely been seen alive in the deep, so many mysteries remain regarding these remarkable fish. The Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute tweeted, Let's pull up this image from the Smithsonian that really shows off exactly how weird this fish is. So here we have the three fish, and you can see exactly how different they all are. The Smithsonian says there are other examples of males and females with very different shapes and of animals changing from one shape to another as they grow older. But this is one of the most amazing examples of sexual dimorphism combined with metamorphosis ever found among vertebrates. So we are talking literally about a super rare shape-shifting fish that in my opinion looks creepy as all holy hell. I'd say that you can find this beast at the bottom of the ocean but odds are you won't ever even run into it because of how rare it is. We've been exploring the bottom of our oceans for quite some time now and we are only just starting to learn a little bit about this fish. In all honesty, we really have no idea about it though. Whatever it is or whatever it does, one thing is pretty clear to me though. It's creepy looking, it lives at the bottom of the ocean, and I don't like it. Number four on this list is the goblin shark. This fish has got to be at the top of everyone's lists when it comes to the grossest looking creatures in the world. National Geographic says, Swishing through the deep sea, a goblin shark notices a small, yummy looking squid. The animal inches towards its prey. But as the fish closes in, the snack starts to dart away. So the shark thrusts its jaw three inches out of its mouth. The jaw is connected to three inch long flaps of skin that can unfold from its snout. The predator then grabs the squid in its teeth. After scarfing down the meal, the shark fits its jaw back into its mouth and swims off. That's right guys, a goblin shark's top and bottom teeth are attached to ligaments or bands of skin tissue tucked into its mouth. When prey is just out of reach, the shark extends the elastic tissue out of the mouth to nab the grub. This allows the animal to chow down on snacks such as teleost fish and squid. It also makes the shark one jaw-dropping fish. These disgusting looking creatures like to live right at the bottom of the ocean and are native to the oceans around Japan. There are also some of them off of South Africa and in the ocean water surrounding Portugal. They can grow to be 12 feet long and weigh almost 500 pounds. These aren't monsters, but they may as well be. A 500 pound beast with a detachable jaw that looks like a goblin just chilling at the deepest darkest part of the ocean. I truly cannot think of a whole lot of creatures I would rather run into than this freaking thing. And number three, the big fin squid. Of the genus Magna Pinidae family, the big fin squid, or as I like to call it, this ocean alien with shoulders, belongs to a group of rarely seen cephalopods with a distinctive morphology, meaning they're really, really weird and rare. Magna Pinni meaning big fin, of course. The first record of us catching and looking at this family comes from a specimen talismani caught off the Azores in 1907. This was our first look at this bizarre fish, but due to the damaged nature of the find, little information 
information could be extracted and was classified just as a squid. The problem is when you pull these things out of its atmosphere, it just looks like a piece of wet crinoline dress all of a sudden. Don't get the whole terrifying effect, you know? In 1956, a similar squid was caught in the South Atlantic, but during the 80s, two specimens were found in the Atlantic, then three more were found in the Pacific, and eventually the creatures found a place amongst the books as its own species, entering the family Magdapinidae. Squids. Okay, so it's not actually a squid, but loosely related. Like a third cousin of maybe alien origin. This thing looks like it crashed here on an asteroid. I'm just gonna say it, doesn't it? Like there's only 12 of these, not many. The arms and tentacles are the same length. The appendages are also huge and held perpendicular to the body, creating the appearance of a illusion of arms and elbows, giving its trademark alien figure. Most remarkable is the length of the elastic tentacles, which has been estimated around 20 to 30 times its mass and length. Deep sea video evidence puts the total length of the largest specimens at 10 meters long. Yeah, that's two trucks. Close-ups of the body and head show us that the fins are extremely large, being proportionately nearly as big as those of a big fin squid. Hence, the comparison. While they do appear similar, no specimens or samples of the adults have been taken out of the water yet, leaving their exact identity, bodily functions, and internal organs a mystery. Awesome. Yes, more mysteries under the water. All right, I only had uh, really bad night terrors already. Let's just add this in there. Yeah, I'd take a shark swimming with a brain at me rather than this alien thing swimming up to me and just staring at me, trying to understand me for about an hour. Terrifying. Number two, the gulper eel. Eurypharynx pelicanoides. The pelican eel, or what I just said, is basically a deep sea eel. Like, deep, deep sea. If you've seen the Ridley Scott's Alien film franchise or the Predator universe, you'll know that this thing looks exactly like that. Yeah, am I wrong? But instead of like eight feet tall, it's only three feet tall. Yeah, still terrifying. The pelican eel has been described by many synonyms, yet nobody has been able to demonstrate that more than one species of pelican eel exists. Ride in solo, huh? That's creepy. One of a kind kind of deal. It's also commonly known as the gulper eel, or umbrella mouth gulper eel, due to its terrifying size and function of its mouth. The mouth and jaws resemble a pelican's gulp, hence the name. The morphology of the pelican eel can be difficult to describe because they're so fragile and oddly shaped that they become damaged when they're pulled out of the deep sea's immense pressure. We can't just swim all the way down there and take pictures, you know? The pelican eel's most notable feature, its mouth, which is much, much larger than its body, like five times the size. The mouth is loosely hinged and can be opened wide enough to swallow a fish three times its size. This thing has like a lower mandible of a python, just like unhinging it before dinner. The lower jaw is hinged at the base of the head with no body mass behind it, making the head look abysmally huge. It's basically a swimming mouth with a spine, tail, and I think a brain? Yeah, we don't really know yet. With dot-sized eyes, yeah. It usually is always moving too, rarely stationary. It hunts in some sort of folded state. The pelican the eel's mouth has the capability to change to an inflated shape when hunting, giving the mouth its notably massive appearance. Dude, the mouth unfolds like the James Webb telescope. Like a hundred working parts. Technically, it's like a geometric shape unfolding as a mouth, followed by stretching, like a cootie catcher. Remember those? This thing eats like a cootie catcher. When the pelican eel is in pursuit of its prey, it slowly starts unfolding itself. Imagine this thing's trucking behind you, unhinging its jaw, slowly the closer it gets. The head and jaw structure unfold and spread horizontally, not vertically. Okay, that's scarier all of a sudden. The unspreading event, or as I like to call it, lunch, is followed by the inflation of the mouth from a stretchable skin of the head, which it feeds on prey. Then, water's expelled via the gills. Okay, so it's basically a large strainer, and after it eats, it blows itself out, releases all the water back into the water. Just wrings itself out. Come on, this thing is horrifying. Thank gosh it only eats crustaceans and creepy little crawlies on the bottom seafloor. And number one, the phantom jellyfish. Stygio medusa gigantea. I love that word. Commonly known as the giant phantom jellyfish, is a part of the monotypic genus of deep sea jellyfish. Stygio medusa. With only around 110 sightings in 110 years, it's a jellyfish that is rarely seen. Well, I guess like once a year. I don't know, I'm not really good at math. Believed to be widespread throughout the world, it thrives in all oceans and seas, with the exception of the Arctic Ocean. Yeah, a little too cold for it. The Monterey Bay Aquarium remotely operated underwater vehicles have only sighted the beast 27 times in 27 years. Dude, what's with all the matching numbers? Is this CIA run? A 
study conducted by the Journal of the Marine Biological Association of the UK revealed info regarding the species and had this to say. The Gigantia is thought to be one of the largest invertebrate predators on this planet. One more time please. The largest predator. It is commonly found in the ocean's midnight zone, reaching depths of about 7,000 meters. Deepest human free dive is about 300 meters. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're good. Unless you have a wide lung span. The largest predators in the deep sea, the giant phantom jellyfish's typical prey consists of plankton and small fish. The S. gigantia tends to be dominant in locations with a low productivity system, meaning it deters other predators of fish. Like, it likes it quiet. A shy eater, I'd say. However, when this thing is hungry, it battles squids, eels, and even whales. Okay, never mind. Just when I thought this thing was really cute, it fights off whales for food. The first specimen weighing in at 100 pounds was collected in 1899, but it wasn't recognized as its own species until 1959. Imagine this thing chasing you and catching you, tangling you in like 100 feet of netting tentacles so it can just eat you slowly. Does this thing have a consciousness? Like, you can kind of tell if a shark is swimming near or close to you or what it's kind of feeling. This thing just slowly, softly swimming towards you before it ingests you? Way scarier. Like, I'm convinced these landed here. The oceans are way scarier than things on land. We haven't even started to uncover the whole ecosystem yet. Coming in at five, Kieran Crowen. Kieran Crowen was a large sea monster hailing from Scottish Gaelic folklore, which, according to an old saying, was so large it fed on seven whales. I quote, seven herrings, a salmon's fill, seven salmon, a seal's fill, seven seals, a whale's fill, seven whales, a Kieran Crowen's fill. Oh man. Now, while its immense size poses a threat to humankind, it prefers to toy with its prey first. It hides its enormous figure by shrinking down to the size of a silverfish. Then when fishermen catch it in their nets, the monster transforms back into a gigantic beast and swallows the fisherman whole. Nasty. In at four, Ninjin. The Ninjin is an arctic humanoid life form that inhabits the icy waters of the Antarctic and has reportedly been observed on a handful of occasions by crew members of whaling ships. The Ninjin are said to be completely white in colour with a length of around 20 to 30 metres. Crew members who have spotted the life form have described it as having a human like shape, often with legs, arms and even five fingered hands. So creepy. Now the only visible facial features are the eyes and the mouth and on one occasion crew members approached the creature, believing it to be a foreign submarine. However, they were wrong and it quickly became apparent that it was non-man made and that it was alive. The creature disappeared relatively quickly, thankfully. Now most of the sightings seem to occur at night, which makes the creature far more difficult to photograph. However, in pictures that have been taken, the ninja mostly just looks like ice, so their skin is said to be smooth, almost human-like. No believable pictures have ever been taken, perhaps because the ninja don't exist, or perhaps it's because of a large cover up by the government. What do you guys think though? Coming in at number three, we have the blue ringed octopus. This creature is beautiful looking and easily recognizable due to their yellow skin and blue and black rings, but it's one of the deadliest species of small octopus in the ocean. And scientists have even classified them as one of the world's most dangerous animals. To the eye, this creature is beautiful, but their blue and black rings around their bodies change dramatically when they become threatened. Despite only being five to eight inches in size, their venom is extremely powerful and can be very dangerous to humans if they're provoked. If stung, it can result in a number of things such as nausea, respiratory arrest, heart failure, blindness, total body paralysis, and can lead to death within a few minutes if not treated or could cause drowning due to the results of the venom and the inability to swim to the surface. In order to come in contact with the creature's venom, you would have to come into direct contact with the octopus. When faced with danger, the octopus's first instinct is to flee, but if the threat persists, they will then go into a defensive stance and display its blue rings. If the octopus is cornered or touched, the person would be in danger of being bitten and stung by its deadly venom. They are named one of the deadliest sea creatures for a reason because despite them being such a small animal, they carry enough venom in their bodies to kill up to 26 humans with just a few minutes. Within just a few minutes. These terrifying sea creatures feed crabs, shrimp and other small animals. They reside in tide pools and coral reefs in the Pacific and Indian Oceans, from Japan to Australia. And their species tend to only live around two to three years, but this may vary based on their nutrition, temperature and intensity of light. Be extremely
extremely careful when in the ocean, be sure to watch out for these terrifying creatures. They would be easy to see due to their bright colours, but if spotted, swim away fast before you get attacked. Coming in at number 2, the box jellyfish. This is a species of jellyfish that usually tops the list of the most dangerous sea creatures in the world, and the world's most venomous creature. At first look, its appearance isn't too threatening, but if stung, it is life threatening. The sting can result in death in less than 5 minutes. The most recent death from a box jellyfish sting was in February 2021, to a man who passed away 10 days after being stung while swimming at Cape York Beach in Australia. Before that, the last known fatality was in 2007, and total of 17 deaths since the first report in 1883, and that's just in Australia alone. In the Philippines there are far more fatalities with up to 40 deaths annually. In Thailand, after a man died in 2014 from a box jellyfish sting, they enhanced their first aid stations on beaches, but yet the next year two more fatalities occurred due to this deadly sea creature. Unlike some jellyfish, the box jellyfish can swim, which means they are capable of hunting for prey, and can move through the ocean at a very fast pace of up to 8 miles per hour. They act hunt their prey which tend to be smaller fish and invertebrates including prawns and bait fish. Unfortunately the box jellyfish has many enemies like crabs, different species of turtles, rabbit fish, batfish and butterfish, but their swift swimming and venomous stings help themselves stay alive. An interesting fact about box jellyfish is that in Hawaii the number of box jellyfish peak after a full moon, which is apparently when they come near the shore to spawn. So if you're thinking of going for a swim in the ocean during a beautiful full moon, I'd advise to just wait until the next day because you don't want to ruin a nice vacation with a fatal box jellyfish sting. No, no one wants to ruin a vacation by dying. That would suck. And finally, in at number one, we have cone snail. Just by looking at this little snail sitting in its shell, you wouldn't think it would be dangerous or harmful at all. Their shells are beautiful looking with colourful and complex patterns on its shell, but don't be fooled, you should never handle this snail. It is one of the most venomous sea snails in the ocean. There are over 600 species of these cone snails all around the world, and they are extremely toxic. The most dangerous species to humans are the slightly larger ones, but pretty much all cone snails are capable of stinging if handled handled or stepped on and can be very fatal to humans. Cone snails use a hypodermic needle like modified radula tooth and their toxic venom gland is used to attack and paralyze their prey instantly before eating them. The tooth is hollow and barbed and is attached to the tip of the radula inside the snails throat. When the snail detects an animal nearby that it wants to feed on, it extends a long flexible tube called a proboscis towards their prey and the radula tooth is loaded with their toxic venom from their venom bulb and is fired into the prey by a powerful muscular contraction. It's like gleeking. They tend to be found in all tropical and subtropical seas in deep areas near rocks and coral reefs. These toxic creatures are carnivorous and predatory, and they feed on small bottom dwelling fish, marine worms, and even other cone snails. If you're going to swim in the ocean, you shouldn't really ever come in contact with these venomous creatures due to them living on the ocean floor. But if they ever wash up on the shore, be careful if you're collecting shells from your vacation, and make sure you don't pick up any cone shells just in case there's a snail living inside, because it could be deadly. Only one drop of their venom can kill up to 20 people. So when swimming in the oceans, be careful and watch out for all these deadly creatures. This is why I never go in the ocean, everything wants to kill you. Coming in at 5, Goblin Shark. The Goblin Shark is perhaps the ugliest animal in the entire world. Not shaming, just stating facts. Also known as the living fossil, the Goblin Shark lives up to 1300 feet deep inside the sea. What is terrifying about these creatures is that they can detach their whole mouth from their body in order to get their prey. How terrifying is that? They can grow up to 3.5 meters and love hunting teleos fish. They have flabby bodies with small fins with nail like teeth and are quite different from other sharks as they are the strongest looking and again perhaps the ugliest sharks in the ocean. They have a pinkish appearance, sometimes red when they are old because blood vessels can be seen through its skin. The camouflage colour of its skin helps it hide in plain sight, allowing it to catch prey undetected. They are very rarely seen in the deep oceans and were first seen on the coast of Japan in 1898 by naturalist Alan Alston. Now it is visible in all oceans, but mostly in Brazil, the Gulf of Mexico, France, Portugal, and Senegal. In at four, fangtooth fish. Fangtooth fish are the deepest living fish ever found on Earth. They can survive 5,000 meters below sea level, which is absolutely crazy. The pressure at that level is 500 times than that of the land. Their teeth are in proportion to their body size, making them one of the scariest deep sea creatures we have ever come across. Their eyes are situated on the top of their heads and comparatively smaller in size. Not only that, but they 
array of scales on its skin which are shaped like plates and their fins are small and spineless. They are a big fan of thriving in oceans with tropical and temperate temperature and it can go as deep as 5000 meters and hence one of the deepest living creatures in the entire world. Like me it avoids sunlight and only goes to the ocean surface during the night. Same, same. Despite how it looks, it is in fact harmless to humans, so don't fret if you see one during a late night paddle. They are instead a big fan of squid and fish, and locate its prey by detecting chemical signatures of other fish varieties in the water. Coming in at number three, deep sea dragonfish. This is probably one of the ugliest fish I've ever seen, which is why it fits perfectly on this list, and that is the deep sea dragonfish. Sometimes referred to as the scaleless dragonfish, this hideous creature looks like something straight out of a horror movie, with its sharp transparent teeth, slimy skin and enormous mouth which can open more than 100 degrees. Even though it's not the biggest creature of the deep sea, that doesn't stop it from eating prey 50 times its size and that is beyond scary. This creature's teeth are stronger than the teeth of some of the fiercest fish predators like piranhas and even great white sharks. The dragonfish is a ferocious predator and can actually produce its own light through a chemical process known as bioluminescence, but when he's not hunting prey, he can easily disappear into the darkness of the deep sea and lurk in his habitat, 1600 feet under the surface of the ocean. The deep sea is the darkest and deepest corner of the ocean. With crushing pressure and lack of oxygen and light, it makes it extremely difficult for anything to survive down there. Thankfully, this predator is deep, deep, deep down in the ocean, and hopefully, none of us will ever come in contact with this hideous water monster. Coming in at number two, we have frilled shark. The frilled shark is often called the living fossil due to its appearance, looking like a massive prehistoric eel. They have have a dark brown exterior and are almost 7 feet long. These creatures are terrifying due to their 40 rows of curved razor sharp teeth which is a total of about 300 teeth. First discovered in 1876 by zoologist Ludwig Dodelin, who classified this creature as a discrete species of shark and a few years later after much research it was later named its own species in the shark family. Given a name because of its frilly looking gills and today there are two different types of species of the frilled shark. Regardless of how how many species there are, I don't want to come in contact with any of them. This creature tends to live in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans and don't tend to come into contact with humans, but a handful of times they have been accidentally caught by commercial fishermen. Thankfully you probably will never come into contact with this terrifying creature because the closest they have come to the ocean surface is 390 feet deep, but typically they reside more than 3 times that depth. They live very close to the ocean floor and survive off of cephalopods, bony fish and smaller sharks. When hunting for food, these creatures move similar to an eel, lunging and bending to capture their prey and continue to swallow them whole with their long and flexible jaws and of course their massive amounts of teeth. Due to the creatures living in the deep sea, they are rarely seen and for good reasons, but there was rare footage that came out in 2007 of one. If you're not too scared, you can go check it out after this video. And finally, in at number one, we have stonefish. They are known to live in the tropical Pacific and Indian oceans, and these deep sea creatures have perfect camouflage to look like a rock on the floor of a coral reef. So even if you somehow were around one, you probably wouldn't even notice it was a fish. They are close relatives to the scorpion fishes and consume other reef fishes and some seafloor invertebrates. They don't actively hunt their prey, they just wait for their prey to come to them, waiting hours at a time. And when their potential target is less than their body length away, they will strike. They have some of the most powerful jaws and very large mouths that create so much pressure they are able to easily trap their unsuspecting prey and swallow them whole. This creature is the most venomous fish in the world. It has 13 spines along its back that can release the venom, and this can kill a human within a few hours. They have a potent neurotoxin secreted from glands at the base of their needle-like dorsal fin spines which they stick up when disturbed or threatened. The more venom that is injected into, the worse it will be. Their stings cause terrible pain, swelling, necrosis and then of course death. These horrifying creatures are actually considered a delicacy in many parts of Asia, such as Japan and China. They are usually cooked ginger and put into a clear soup but could also be served raw as sashimi. As long as they are prepared correctly and their dorsal fins are removed, they are a dense and sweet snack and considered by many to be good for your health. If you are swimming in the ocean, you thankfully won't come in contact with this killer fish creature because they live on the ocean floor so you won't have to worry, but if you are curious about the stonefish you can check out more about it on the show 
Rainbow River monsters. They did an episode in 2017. Even though the stonefish isn't the largest creature in the deep sea, it's their venom that makes them the most terrifying. They don't use their venom to catch prey, but it's quite effective when they are threatened and can turn away even the strongest potential predators. Number five, the frilled shark. Chlamydoslacus ingenius and Chlamydoslacus africana, or better known as the frilled shark and the frilled South African shark, are the two extinct species of shark that swam our oceans. Thank gosh. Well, actually, still kind of do. Eh. The frilled shark is considered a living fossil. Not just its age and time spent surfing the coast, due to its primitive eel like physical trait, the brown color, the jaws, eight foot body, and the way its fins, spine, and head move under the water are common in ancient serpents and water creatures. So this thing is like an eel serpent shark hybrid. Yeah. Little jarring, commonly referred to simply as the frilled shark because of its six pairs of gill slits at its throat. It swims amongst the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans, usually in deep, dark, murky waters of the outer continental shelf and upper continental slope. These deep dive sharks usually live and sleep near the ocean floor. Okay, that's that's a good sign, of course. They live on a diet of cephalopods, smaller sharks, and even swim to the surface at night to feed what's floating atop on the surface. When hunting, the frilled shark moves like an eel, bending and slithering to swallow prey with its long and flexible jaws, which are equipped with 300 rows of recurved needle-like teeth. So am I just gonna like snorkel into one of these things any day now? Well, good thing is they're really hard to find. Like, really hard. Usually caught by accident in commercial fishing nets, usually at depths anywhere between 50 and 1,000 meters. So unless you're free diving at night, you should be okay. Yeah, they like it deep and dark. I'd say these things are already scarier than the Meg. It's like a shark but an eel snake hybrid with a shark head and shark size teeth. That sounds a bit scarier. Well, I mean the Meg preferred warmer, shallower water, so maybe this one's a tie. I don't know who's snorkeling two miles deep, but it's certainly not me, okay? In my opinion, I'd take a large great white over this dinosaur looking thing slithering after me any day. Number four, the fang tooth fish. Ah yes, the Anoplogaster cornuta, or commonly known as the fang tooth. I wonder why. Though they spend most of their time in the deep, deep, common fang tooths are known to migrate towards the surface at night. Sorry, the fang tooths are known to migrate towards the surface at night. That is the scariest sentence I've ever said. Dude, these are way scarier than this giant ancient shark. Like all the scariest things come out at night. You notice that? And root canals, but they're usually done during the day. The word megalodon is Greek words meaning giant tooth. I'd take big teeth over this thing chasing me around any day. Thankfully though, this guy is only about a foot in length. Okay, that's not so bad. The fish has a mouth that are full of long snake teeth, perfect for hanging onto its prey as they shake. The lockable jaws ensure that although thrashing may occur, the fang tooth's teeth are locked clamps that effortlessly swim with dinner in its mouth, just getting dragged deeper and deeper down, wiggling and can't move, trying to run for their lives. Well, swim for their lives. And fish of any size. I'm sorry? Yep. Any size. Common fang tooths have been recorded at depths of about 5,000 meters, so whatever lives down there, it's game on. Look at this thing. I was scared of sunfish and seaweed brushing up against my legs. This thing swimming by me? This thing? It looks like a night terror in itself, stalking their preferred prey of crustaceans and, of course, other fishes the same size. Common fang tooths are more active than many other deep sea fish and seek out food for meal and sport rather than being purely ambush predators eating when they're hungry. That's terrifying. Packing up for the long winter, huh? Their huge mouth and very long teeth ensure that they are able to attack prey and actually hold on while they relocate them to a deeper, darker spot where they can kind of take their time on the meal. I've swam with sharks. In my opinion, this thing's way scarier. Like eating small critters running around the ocean floor, sure. But also imagine eating something the same size of itself with teeth, no problem. Slowly devouring it bite by bite. Yeah, that's way scarier. Come on, just reattaching itself every bite taking you along for the free ride. Yeah, that's 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 horrifying. In at three, the Kraken. The Kraken is a legendary sea monster hailing from Norse mythology and is a creature of enormous proportions, meaning an unhealthy or twisted animal. The Kraken was borrowed for one of the main antagonist monsters in Ray Harryhausen's Clash of the Titans. This creature is often described as a cephalopod and resembling a giant octopus or squid. The Kraken is said to emerge from the depths of the ocean and envelop whole ships in the grasp of its tentacles and drag them beneath the murky waters. Now, most will remember this 
sea monster also making an appearance in the second installment of the Pirates of the Caribbean, which featured a more mythologically accurate depiction of the Kraken as opposed to the 2010 remake of Clash of the Titans. Now, its true mythological history goes something like this. After returning from Greenland, an old Norwegian author described in detail the physical characteristics and feeding behavior of the Kraken, proposing that there must be just two in all of existence, stemming from the observation that the beasts have always been sighted in the same parts of Greenland Sea and that each seemed incapable of reproduction, as there was seemingly no increase in their numbers. And while that fact may put some minds at ease, there is no denying the impact the Kraken has had on popular culture and sailors alike, with many fearing beneath those murky waters are elongated tentacles waiting patiently to feast. In a 2 Dagon Dagon is a deity who presides over the Deep Ones, an amphibious humanoid race indigenous to Earth's oceans. Now, this bad boy was first introduced in Lovecraft's short story Dagon, but is also mentioned extensively through the mythos. Also referred to as Father Dagon, he is a great old one and the consort of Mother Hydra. Now, Dagon is huge, really huge, and could potentially reach a height of 50 feet. He is an enormous monster and is worshipped by the devout cult of humans and Deep Ones, who revere him as their deity. It is rumored that he is immortal, however, his longevity may be attributed to his fraternization with the Starspawn, who will oftentimes select specimens from a given species to protect, nurture, and empower for reasons only known to them. Now, Dagon is aptly described in the short story, I quote, with only a slight churning to mark its rise to the surface, the thing slid into view above the dark waters. Vast polyphemus like and loathsome, it darted like a stupendous monster of nightmares to the monolith, about which it flung its gigantic gigantic scaly arms, the while it bowed its hideous head and gave vent to certain measured sounds. This is not a beast you would want to stumble across on Dark Knight. And finally in at number 1, Cthulhu. Cthulhu is a fictional cosmic entity created by our favourite writer over here at Top 5 Scary, H.P. Lovecraft himself, and was first introduced in the short story The Call of Cthulhu, which, if you haven't read it, get on it immediately. Cthulhu is a great old one of great power that lies in the depth like slumber beneath the Pacific Ocean in his sunken city of Rillier, and remains a dominant presence in the eldritch dealings on our world. Now, it's near impossible to describe Cthulhu, however, the most detailed descriptions come from the Call of Cthulhu and are based on statues of the creature. One of these statues, constructed by an artist after a series of baleful dreams, is said to have, I quote, yielded simultaneous pictures of an octopus, a dragon, and a human creature. Caricature, a pulpy tentacled head surmounted, a grotesque and scaly body with rudimentary wings. Horrifying, right? Worse still, this oceanic monster has a loyal group of followers. It is unknown how large the throng of worshippers are, but his cult has many cells around the globe and are noted for chanting horrid phrases that translate to, I quote, in his house at Rillier, dead Cthulhu waits dreaming. So, what happens when Cthulhu emerges from his slumber beneath the ocean? Well, the story says that, I quote, the thing cannot be described, but it is called the green sticky spawns of the stars, with flabby claws and an awful squid head with writhing feelers. All I can say folks is that if Cthulhu awakens there's trouble for not just you but for all of us, you have been warned. Coming in at number 5 we have Titan Triggerfish. These fish are known to be quite aggressive to their prey and they tend to bite divers who come too close to their nests. These fish are among the largest species of triggerfish and they are commonly found in lagoons and at reefs deep in the ocean, stretching from Australia to Thailand. Their diet consists of sea urchins, crustaceans, tube worms, and coral. It often feeds by turning over rocks, stirring up sand and biting off pieces of branching coral. They don't typically feed on other fish, but they've been observed being aggressive and attacking other fish who enter their territory. Along with being aggressive, naturally they get extremely aggressive during the reproduction season when the female is guarding its nest, which is placed in a flat and sandy area and looks roughly cone shaped. If you dive down and come in contact with the female fish near her nest, it will defend its eggs at all costs often exposing its erect dorsal spine and swimming rapidly towards you to attack. It is suggested to swim horizontally away from the danger zone rather than going up to the surface right away. Triggerfish can grow up to 30 inches and their size and oval shape make them very recognizable along with their threatening looking teeth and have evolved as an apex predator within their natural habitat. If you're on vacation and are planning to go scuba diving or snorkeling, be careful not to swim near coral reefs because they tend to swim around there and if you get too close, 
close they will attack and bite you. The Titan triggerfish bites are not venomous, they are extremely painful and can cause serious injury. Coming in at number 4 we have Flower Urchin. Yes it has a nice name but it is anything but that. It is considered to be the most dangerous urchin in the world. This urchin has flower like patterning and are usually a pinkish white to yellowish white colouring with a central purple dot and that's how it got its beautiful name. They tend to live in coral reefs, seagrass and sandy environments lower down towards the ocean floor and it feeds on algae. Bryozoans are organic detritus and can grow to a maximum diameter of 15 to 20 centimetres. They reside from Japan all the way to Australia and in the Red Sea to the East African coast. Flower urchins are among the numerous species of sea urchins known as collector urchins and they often cover their upper body with debris from their surroundings to camouflage from others. They are usually covered in objects like dead coral fragments, shells, seaweeds and rocks. If you just simply touch this creature it can deliver excruciatingly painful stings that can result in hospitalization. It can cause paralysis of the tongue, lips, eyes and muscles, faintness, difficulty breathing and the inability to speak. A scientist named Sutomu Fujiwara who was once stung by the flower urchin described feeling like he was going to die. So when in the ocean beware of your surroundings and make sure not to touch this urchin. Another account of someone being stung by these dangerous creatures was the drowning of a pearl diver after being rendered unconscious from accidental contact with a flower urchin. Again if you are going to be swimming, snorkeling or deep sea diving in the ocean be very careful you don't come into contact with these beautiful yet dangerous creatures. Number 3 on this list is Ninjin. Ninjin are very strange mythical creatures that have only come into the limelight very recently. The rumors and legends of these creatures have largely taken place in Japan. Japanese whale research boats that are sent to the arctic waters have reported seeing these massive 20 to 30 meter long creatures that are completely white swimming through the ocean. Now when I first heard that I thought that these things might just be big whales but their shape is unlike anything that we've ever seen before. These creatures are said to look almost human with witnesses saying that they saw massive legs and arms coming from the beast. They also have eyes and a mouth but not many other facial features from the reports. For just over the last decade, stories about Ninjin in the Antarctic waters have circulated throughout Japan. One of the most famous was when crew members on the deck of a ship saw what they thought was a submarine in the distance, but when they approached it, realized the creature was alive and watched as it dived quickly underwater. There are some photos that have surfaced on the internet, but nothing that can fully substantiate the claims of this creature's existence. It is also currently unknown if there's only one of these creatures or if there are several of them swimming around the seas. This beast, unlike some of the other creatures that we've talked about is not just a bigger version of an already existing animal. It isn't just a big snake or a big shark, it's a completely different entity entirely. This makes me think that it would be harder for somebody to confuse a big whale with a creature like this because a whale doesn't look anything like a ninja. Hopefully more sightings and evidence can come to light soon and we can get a definitive confirmation if this thing is real or not. Number 2 on this list is the Oklahoma Octopus. This mythical octopus is said to inhabit some of the bigger lakes in Oklahoma like Lake Thunderbird, Ulaga Lake and Lake Ten Killer. The sightings indicate that this is a very large aggressive octopus that we wouldn't want to mess with. Many deaths in these lakes have been linked to this octopus or octopi if there are multiple of them. What's very strange about this creature and what makes a lot of people skeptical is that typically octopi don't live in freshwater areas. They're capable of doing it for a short time but they never live there for extended periods. That being said there have still been multiple sightings and reports of this creature living in these lakes. It's said to be the size of a horse and has a reddish brownish skin tone to it. It eats what any other octopus would eat but has a tendency to kill humans in its area. The reasoning behind this is unknown though because it doesn't actually eat the humans but only drowns them. Potentially the octopus feels threatened by humans swimming in its water and is very territorial. There's no physical evidence proving the existence of this creature but the rate of drownings in these three lakes that I mentioned earlier they are far higher than anywhere else in the area. That statistic along with the numerous sightings from fishermen and swimmers have locals believing in the legend of the Oklahoma octopus. Number 1 on this list is Organism 46B. Organism 46B is believed to be a massive 33 foot long squid like creature that was said to have 14 different tentacles. This thing lived in Vostok Lake which is a subglacial lake located under 2 entire miles of ice. This creature has the ability to animate its legs after they have been amputated, it's capable of shape shifting, it's extremely intelligent and also extremely hostile and it has the ability to immobilize its prey with a 
toxin that it could spray up to 150 feet. We've only actually known about this creature for a few years. Although the Russians initially established an Antarctic base on top of Vostok Lake in 1957, they actually weren't aware that there was a lake beneath them until 1974, and then they weren't able to get to the lake until 2012. It was only after that that they discovered Organism 46B. After they drilled all the way through the ice and got to a point where they could send divers down there, they discovered this creature. Sadly, the discovery was a deadly one though. Dr. Anton Padalka, a researcher at the site, is quoted saying, he tread water wearing a blissful smile as the organism approached him. We watched helplessly as it used its arms to tear off its head, then popped its remains in its mouth. It was as if it had hypnotized him telepathically. This ability to completely lull its prey into a sense of is apparently what this creature's venomous spray is capable of doing to people. Padalka had some more interactions with this beast, but it didn't take long before the Russian government came into the mix and sent a specialized team into Vostok Lake to extract the organism. The fact that any of this news even made it to the public is pretty marvelous, considering the Russian government wanted to keep it under wraps as much as they could. Hopefully, there aren't any more of these dangerous beasts lurking in the subglacial waters waiting to strike. Coming in at number five, we have Colossal Squid. The Colossal Squid, which is not seen by many humans unless they have washed up on shore, they are considered to be the largest and heaviest squid species in the sea, weighing a total of 1,500 pounds and having a length of 33 feet long, as well as being the most elusive and mysterious creatures of the deep sea. The species were first discovered in 1925 when two colossal squid arms were found in a sperm whale's stomach. Then in 1981, another one was discovered, and finally in 2003, the colossal squid was collected for further research of this new and crazy species of squid. But to this day, very little is known about this deep sea creature. These squids are also known to have the largest eyes out of the entire animal kingdom, being larger than a human head. Unlike other squid species have hooks on their arms, which are very muscular and strongly attached to their arms, and it's said these hook-like things are used to help the squid hold and immobilize struggling prey. Sounds like a horror movie death to me. Due to them being so far down in the sea, little is known about them and their behaviors, but what is known is that they prey on sperm whales. Yes, these creatures are fearless. They see a massive whale and say that's breakfast, which is terrifying. Only a few have been caught, and those couple that have been have been put on display at the Museum of New Zealand in December 2008. So if you're planning a trip to New Zealand, I would definitely suggest going to see this massive specimen because the likelihood of you coming into contact with this squid while swimming is slim to none. But then again, why would you ever want to get close to this thing while going for a swim? Coming in at number four, we have Atlantic Wolffish. The Atlantic Wolffish comes with a lot of nicknames, otherwise known as the Atlantic Catfish, Sea Cat, Wolf Eel, Ocean Catfish, Sea Wolf, and the most fitting, the Devil Fish. Their blue-like appearance makes them stand out from many of the other fish species in the deep sea. Besides their unique appearance, wolffish actually naturally produce antifreeze to keep their blood flowing due to their extremely cold environment. One good thing about these scary creatures is that they help control the crab and sea urchin populations, which tend to get out of hand quickly and can have a negative effect on the health of a marine system. They have several fang-like teeth in the front, followed by three more rows of teeth inside their powerful and crushing jaws. Even their throats are armed with serrated teeth. If that's not terrifying enough, they can grow as long as a fully grown human is tall, so about six feet give or take. Their diets consist of large hermit crabs, starfish, crustaceans, large whelks, and sea urchins. These hideous creatures are known for their quick strikes and even quicker kills because being a part of the deep sea community is a fish eat fish world down there and thankfully we are safe from them up here on land. In fact, the numbers of Atlantic wolfish in the US are actually depleting due to the overfishing and according to the National Marine Fisheries Service, they are currently considered a species of concern. If you're an avid fisher in the Atlantic Ocean, try to steer clear from these creatures and let them do Number three on this list is Megalodon. Would this list really be complete if I didn't include the ancient king of the sea? Eleanor Imster writes, Scientists think that Megalodon looked like a stockier version of the great white shark, with strong, thick teeth built for grabbing prey and breaking bones. Regarded as one of the largest and most powerful predators who have ever lived, fossil remains of Megalodon suggest that this giant shark reached a length of about 60 feet. 
their large jaws could exert a bite force up to 24,000 to 41,000 pounds. That is a massive, massive animal, guys. Multiple times bigger than the great white sharks we have today. This thing was so big that it would actually eat entire whales. Now, many myths have surrounded Megalodon and its existence since scientists first brought this mammoth of the sea up. Estimates say that Megalodon went extinct roughly 2.6 million years ago, but some people don't buy into that theory. For quite a while now, the legend of a giant shark still living amongst the ocean has had a lot of people wondering if it's possible. If Megalodon was still alive, is it possible that we still wouldn't know about it? How could we miss a creature this giant? How many of them would there be left in the waters? There are surely a lot of questions that come up if you believe Megalodon is still a reality. If this creature was still alive, then people think the Marianas Trench is where it's located, a place so deep and uncharted that it's hard for us to know for sure what's down there. I'm personally not convinced this creature still roams the ocean, but comment down below your thoughts. Is Megalodon still alive? What do you think? Number two on this list is the Kraken. The Kraken is one of the largest sea monsters that is said to exist. It all started in Nordic folklore many hundreds of years ago when sailors told tale of a massive beast that preys upon the waters of Norway, Greenland, and Iceland. This fearsome beast was said to pull entire ships to their doom and eat every human on board. The first account of the legend was in 1180 by the King of Norway at the time. Since then, sightings of the creature and lore surrounding its capabilities have grown through the years. Fiction writers and movie makers have also latched onto this creature and included it in many stories. As cool as it would be though, to our current knowledge, the Kraken itself isn't real. However, something similar to it definitely is. The Giant Squid. The Giant Squid is a massive squid that's said to be able to grow up to 13 meters in length. Sightings have even put this creature at 20 meters before, but those have never been proven. Even if 13 meters is the maximum length, that's still a large animal and something that would frighten anyone if you're seeing it for the first time. Many experts believe that the legend of the Kraken happened when Norwegian sailors stumbled upon this giant squid, and rather than name it a giant squid, they called it the Kraken. As time went on, the legend spiraled out of control until we got this massive sea monster which attacks boats. Now even though that might be a bit far from the truth, could I believe that there was one giant squid that was potentially bigger than the rest? Absolutely I could. I could also believe that this giant squid might have attacked a ship or two in its time and maybe even brought one down. If it did do all of that, then there really wouldn't be any difference between this squid and the Kraken. Either way, if you see a massive sea creature with tentacles coming after you, I'd just swim the opposite direction. Number one on this list is the Hook Island Sea Monster. It was first spotted by Robert Le Sarek in 1964 off of Hook Island and after he saw the monster, he went on to describe it in detail. He said, it was only when we got to within 20 feet of the serpent that we could see its head clearly. The head was large, about four feet from top to bottom with jaws about four feet wide. The lower jaw was flat like that of a sandfish. The skin was smooth but rather dull, brownish black in color. The eyes seemed pale green, almost white. The skin looked more like that of a shark than an eel. There were no apparent scales nor did we see any parasites around. We supposed the flexible tail would have shaken any off. There were no fins or spines, nor were there any apparent breathing openings, although there must have been some. Perhaps we didn't see them because our attention was focused mainly on the creature's menacing mouth, the inside of which was whitish. The teeth appeared to be small. A fragment of some dark substance hung from the upper row of teeth, possibly a fish. As the monster was lying on the sandy bottom, we could not see the color of its belly. The creature was about 90 feet long. Behind the head, the body was about 2 feet 4 inches thick and remained that way for about 25 feet. Then it gradually tapered into a whip-like tail. The general color of the body was black with one foot wide brownish rings every 5 feet the first starting just behind the head. The skin was smooth but dull. So that's his description and after he and his family saw it, he took some pictures of the creature to prove his claims. We have to remember that these pictures were taken in 1964 and doctoring them would have been far more difficult back then than it is today. I also tend to believe this claim more than most based on the level of detail he described the beast. Obviously it was a pretty jarring experience if he was able to describe the creature in that much detail. Since the claims, people have researched Hook Island for this monster, but with no luck. Hopefully one day we can spot this monster again and know for certain that it truly exists. Number 5. Rose Veiled Fairy Wrasse 
The C. finney fenma was spotted by John Randall in the early 1990s and was initially thought to be just an adult version of C. rubris quamus, a fish from the Maldives. However, just a couple months ago, a new strain of species was finally caught and analyzed. Though there have been hundreds of fish caught off the coast of the Maldives, this colorful, mesmerizing new addition is the first ever to be formally introduced and recognized as a brand new species. All right. Welcome to Earth, little buddy. I love this planet. Every day there's something new, eh? This thing is mesmerizing, right? Look at it, it's just so beautiful. Apparently it changes colors as it grows up too. Different year, different color. The rose-veiled fairy wrasses is one of the first species to have its name derived from the local Dihivehi language with Finifenma meaning rose, a nod to both its beautiful pink hues and the island's national flower. Ah, we're starting this list off nice and easy. Imagine swimming with these. This is beautiful. Nice little rainbow around you. Of course, us being us. This species being so new and abundant has started making it, of course, at high risk of over exploitation. Yeah, don't forget what we do to fish. Yeah, humans can be the worst for this planet also. Already talks of commercialization, tasty new dishes, and exotic deep sea tanks before it's even got a scientific name. That should be a metaphor about how we are. You know, something so new and precious and we're already craving over it. The beauty of nature, I guess. The discovery is part of the California Academies of Science Hope for Reefs initiative started in 2016 by a team of marine biologists and deep sea divers. It was created to explore, explain, and sustain the world's coral reefs by making fundamental breakthroughs in coral reef biology. That's awesome, dude. Okay, so there's like some pure people still out there trying to help. That's beautiful, all right. One for humanity. Okay, we're trying here. Number four, the blanket octopus. The blanket octopus gets its name from its female counterpart, the very rarely seen and supersized female blanket octopus. She has a long fleshy cape that wraps around her tentacles. This cape makes the octopus appear larger and more intimidating to predators. Though the female blanket octopus is already large growing to around two and a half meters in length, the males only grow up to about one inch weighing in on a monstrous one pound. All right. The caped female growing upwards of 40% bigger in mass and size. 40% his size. Okay, this species is much more interesting now. 40 times bigger than its counterpart? Just a little guy, you know? You got this, little man. That's like us dating a sperm whale. How does he not get lost in that big cape? Hey, soulmates are soulmates, right? In fact, the blanket octopus exhibit one of the most extreme sexual size dimorphisms known in any of the animal kingdoms. That's a really cool fact. Unique love, you know? That's like Donkey and Dragon from Shrek. But on a bleaker note, unfortunately scientists don't think that they live very long. Sad, I know. Like many other octopuses, they are short-lived at approximately one to two years for females and three to four years as males. The tiny male drifts through the ocean seeking a mate while protecting their precious reproductive arm tucked away in a sack between their mouth and eye. Males die soon after they mate, while females will continue to live and grow for many months and years longer than the males, spawning around 100,000 eggs which are carried by her her under her arms. Blanket octopuses can be found in both tropical and subtropical waters. They apparently are reported to feed on seafloor mollusks and small fishes. It's not fish, eh? Yeah, it's fishes. Yeah, I, didn't, I never knew that. It's fishes. I like that. Blanket octopuses are also immune to venom, like from the Portuguese man of war, the huge jellyfish. Female blankets actually rip their limbs off and use them as weapons. They use the tentacles of jellyfish to sting other predators for both offense and defense. This is like my new favorite animal. These should be called Joan of Arcs, because that's like the energy I'm getting here. When threatened, the female unfurls her large net-like membranes that spread out like Batman's cape, making her instantly three times the size of an already 12 foot body. Hmm. Gentle giant or limb ripper offer? You tell me. Number three on this list is the proboscis worm. I don't care what anyone says, this has to be a monster. Just based on literally how freaking gross it is, it needs to be qualified as a monster. This species is also known as ribbon worms, and there are actually a ton of ribbon worms in the world. The ones I'm talking about reside deep at the bottom of the ocean. These ones usually grow to be bigger than the other ones in the world. The Smithsonian Magazine says the largest species of ribbon worm is the bootlace worm, which can be found writhing among rocks in the waters of the North Sea. 
Not only is it the largest Nemertian, but it may also be the longest animal on the planet. Uncertainty remains because these stretchy worms are difficult to accurately measure, but they have been found at lengths of over 30 meters and are believed to even grow as long as 60 meters longer than the blue whale. Despite their length, they are less than an inch around. Now these creatures don't have any natural predators and let me tell you why. Because they look disgusting. Like, let me ask you guys, would you want to eat that? I would straight up need to be starving and there would literally need to be nothing edible left on the planet other than this thing before I decide to take a bite. It literally looks like a large intestine that just slithers across the bottom of the ocean. Shockingly enough, this is a real thing though and you can find it chilling in deep waters. Number two on this list is zombie worms. We aren't quite done with the worm talk yet guys because now we have got to look at zombie worms. Zombies are a pretty terrifying monster, so are these just like them? The Smithsonian says zombie worms don't crave brains, instead they seek bones. The 1-3 to three inch Ostax worms were first discovered in the bones of a rotting grey whale on the deep sea floor nearly 10,000 feet deep in 2002. Since then, more Osidex species have been discovered. There are 26 according to the World Register of Marine Species. Zombie worms don't eat mineral bones directly, instead they digest fats within the bone. However, their style of eating is quite different from ours because they don't have a mouth or a stomach. They secrete an acid from their skin that dissolves bone, freeing up the fat and protein trapped inside. Then, symbiotic bacteria living in the worm's body digests the fat and protein. How Osidax acquire nutrients from the bacteria isn't known. They may simply digest the bacteria or nutrients are somehow transferred to the worm. They hold on to whatever bones they can find by drilling in with roots which contain the symbiotic bacteria. Zombie worms can retract these plumes into the body when they are disturbed. If all this isn't strange enough, the only worms doing any drilling are female. The microscopic males live inside their bodies. One study counted 111 males inside just one female zombie worm. This eliminates the pesky step of having to search for a mate because the eggs and sperm are right next to each other. Then the worms can disperse many fertilized eggs far and wide, hoping that they land near some recently fallen bones. Needless to say, but these are some weird freaking creatures. No wonder we've nicknamed them zombie worms. They're about as monstrous as you could possibly get. Not to mention, but they feast on the bodies and bones of the dead, similarly to what zombies would want to be doing. Number one on this list is the Sloan's Viperfish. As with most things on this list, we have a thoroughly disgusting looking creature. This thing is just as dangerous as it is disgusting though. The Twilight Zone says, like many of the inhabitants of the deep sea, Sloan's viperfish sport light producing organs called photophores along its body. These flashing blue, green or yellow lights might attract tasty snacks, but they're most useful for masking the fish's silhouette from predators below. They're also useful for grabbing a meal. When prey comes near, the viper fish drops a glowing light on its dorsal fin ray like a fishing lure in front of its mouth and snap. A muscular jaw filled with clear, sharp teeth comes crashing down like a guillotine. Lucky for the viper fish, its first vertebrae has evolved to act as a shock absorber for that powerful bite. This is the deep sea version of a piranha, except way more deadly. If you were getting attacked by piranhas, there would likely need to be multiple of them to attack you to actually win. I could totally see a world though where you lose one on one versus this thing though. Its teeth would literally dig so deep in your body. Even at the thickest part of your body, this thing has the potential to go all the way through if it bites you well enough. Thank goodness it's swimming thousands of meters below us and we don't need to worry about it popping up on our next snorkeling adventure. Number 5 on this list is Sinkhole Sam. The legend of Sinkhole Sam originated many years ago in Kansas. Sinkhole Sam is said to live in Inman Lake or as the locals call it, the Sinkhole. It's believed to be a 15 foot long serpent like creature that is as round and I quote, as an automobile tire. The people who claim that this serpent was 15 feet and round like an automobile tire are Albert Newfield 
Holyfield and George Rager, two witnesses of the beast. These men are some of the many people who have stumbled upon this creature and have spoken out about it. Based on the reports, people believe that Sinkhole Sam is a type of prehistoric serpent that has managed to survive over the years. Now, back before Kansas was even colonized, there were lakes and rivers all over the terrain, making it a perfect spot for an animal like this to survive. As time went on, the area dried up, and locals believe that Sinkhole Sam took up residence in Inman Lake. As the years have passed, though, the sightings of Sam at Inman Lake have been fewer and farther between. However, the sightings of a similar creature at the Kingman State Lake have grown. This lake isn't too far from Inman Lake either, only 50 miles. 50 miles is certainly a long distance to go, but maybe not for a massive serpent like Sam. Sinkhole Sam, in my opinion, is one of the most likely creatures to actually exist. Unlike other sea beasts that are very far from any living animals that we have in our world, Sinkhole Sam, from most accounts, is just a big snake. I think it's super possible that someone has spotted a massive snake over the years in that lake, and through word of mouth, the story has been exaggerated over the time to become the legend of Sinkhole Sam. Now, if Sam is real, then we should all be in the clear, because even though a 15-foot serpent may be terrifying, there have been no reported attacks from Sinkhole Sam on humans since the legend began. Number four on this list is Leviathan Melville. This ancient beast is aptly named after the Leviathan due to its incredible size. This is a monstrous whale that grew from 45 feet to 60 feet in length. It has the largest teeth from any animal used to eat the world has ever seen, reaching a length of 1.18 feet. Their heads were 10 feet long and their jaws were absolutely massive. Similar to Megalodon, these creatures are long extinct and lived roughly 12 million years ago. Also similarly to Megalodon, they had the exact same diet as the massive shark, whales. That's right guys, this massive whale ate other smaller whales. Also, because it was competing for the same food source as Megalodon, it's not unrealistic to think that those two creatures would have fought several times. And before I go any further about this beast, comment down below who you have in a fight, Megalodon or this Leviathan of whales? I wanna know who you guys got. Anyways, over the years, we've seen many legends about massive whales that were extremely aggressive. Moby Dick is one of the most famous stories of all time and features a massive whale. This creature, however, would have put Moby Dick to shame and potentially would have even had it for lunch. Also, so after it was finished eating Moby Dick, it would have happily eaten Captain Ahab and completely demolished his whaling ship. A lot of other entries on this list have had some reported sightings and witnesses, but this one we have real fossils to prove its actual existence. I've personally always been a fan of whales. In fact, an orca whale is my favorite animal in the whole world, but making an orca whale 60 feet with massive teeth is what we have here, and that might be a bit too much for me if I'm being honest. Coming at three, Kraken. The Kraken is a legendary sea monster of massive proportions and is described as resembling a giant octopus or squid and is said to be capable of enveloping entire ships in the grasp of its tentacles and dragging them beneath the depths of the cold dark ocean. Now the Kraken for years has been spoken of in tales told by sailors as well as featured in various works of fiction since the 13th century and continues to remain popular even today in works like Clash of the Titans. The Kraken is said to roam off the coasts of Norway and Greenland and will attack and destroy any vessel that crosses its path. Now, since the late 18th century, the Kraken has been depicted in a variety of different ways. However, it's primarily drawn as a large octopus-like creature and has often been based on sailors' observations of a giant squid. Scarier still, the Kraken is also depicted to have spikes on its suckers. Yeah, that shit will f*** you up. In earlier depictions, the Kraken was more crab-like and far less intimidating than it is today. But the biggest takeaway? Steer clear of the ocean for very many reasons, but mostly steer clear of the Kraken. That's all I'm saying. Coming at two. Hydra. Also known as Mother Hydra, this Lovecraftian monster is said to resemble a colossal deep one and is an enormous humanoid creature with a fish-like face, flapping gills and Piscean skin. She forms the Holy Trinity with Father Dagon and Great Cthulhu himself. Three entities are worshipped as gods by the aquatic race. Now there is much debate as to whether Hydra is a great old one or if she is simply a massively overgrown deep one. Now it should be noted that Hydra and Dagon were both entrusted by Cthulhu to be guardians of his daughter Cthulhu, a duty which they perform in one of the Deep One's mighty submarine cities beneath the North Atlantic. 
pretty damn cool. And finally, coming in at number one, Leviathan. Leviathan, not to be confused with the roller coaster at Canada's Wonderland, is a sea serpent monster of immense size and first appeared in Jewish belief, referenced in the Hebrew Bible in the Book of Job, the Book of Isaiah, and the Book of Amos. It is described as a primeval monster defeated by the god Hadad. It is described as a primeval monster defeated by the god of Hadad, and draws comparisons to dragon and world serpent narratives. Now, the Leviathan of the Middle Ages is a little different and was used as an image of Satan endangering both God's creatures and God's creation by threatening it with the waters of chaos. Leviathan is classified as one of the seven princes of hell and is the demon of envy. More interesting still, Leviathan represents the element of water. The element of water in Satanism is associated with life and creation, something that Leviathan seeks to destroy. Number five on this list is the Loch Ness Monster. Nessie, as many people refer to this creature, is said to be a huge, long-necked, almost dinosaur-looking creature that lives in Scotland. This creature of the deep specifically resides in Loch Ness, a 37-kilometer loch located in the Scottish Highlands. The legend of this sea creature went worldwide back in 1933. A photo was released to the public showing a strange creature's head protruding from the water of Loch Ness. The world went into a frenzy after that photo got out and the legend of Nessie began. Ever since that point, many sightings have been reported, other pictures have been taken, and even sonar readings have indicated this creature swimming in the loch. All of that being said though, we've never had indisputable proof that Nessie's real. Well, I'm here to tell you that Nessie is real, but maybe not how you expect. New Zealand scientists have taken samples of the water in Loch Ness and have studied the DNA that they found in it. Professor Neil Gamel, a geneticist, is quoted saying, well, our data doesn't reveal their size, but the sheer quantity of the material that says we can't discount the possibility that there may be giant eels in Loch Ness. Therefore, we can't discount the possibility that what people see and believe is the Loch Ness Monster might be a giant eel. So, the Loch Ness Monster, as we understand it, might not be real, but potentially this loch is full of giant eels that resemble all the features that Nessie's reported as having. Maybe this is why we've had such a hard time proving this myth, because for years, people have been looking for the wrong thing. I really like the legend of the Loch Ness Monster and honestly want it to be true, but if it had to be giant eels, then I think I could accept that as well. Number four on this list is the USS Stein Monster. The USS Stein was a Knox-class destroyer ship in the United States Navy. The ship was eventually decommissioned from the American Navy and was transferred to the Mexican Navy in the 90s. That wasn't before it was attacked by a massive sea monster though. In 1978, the USS Stein was attacked by an unknown entity which we now refer to as the USS Stein Monster. This monster was said to have been a giant, with some people estimating its size up to 150 feet in length. The ship was sailing in the Pacific Ocean when it was attacked. Technical difficulties with the ship started going wrong and eventually they brought it back into the port. Upon inspection, the sonar system was completely damaged. There were cuts and gashes over 8% of the ship, with some of them being massively deep. They also found suction cups like those of a squid attached to the ship. After investigation of the suction cups and the gashes, it became clear that what they were attacked by isn't your standard animal. Even a giant squid would have had a hard time doing what the monster did to the ship. Ever since that point, the legend of the USS Stein monster has grown. Obviously, this monster has to be real because it has actually attacked a ship. Sadly, we don't know a whole lot about it though. In truth, we know less about what's on the ocean floor than we do about the surface of the moon. So it's very possible that a creature we aren't familiar with yet is dwelling down there. Coming in at three, giant squid. This squid is giant, in case the name didn't give it away. They can grow up to 14 meters, which is the equivalent to the size of a five story building. Yep, terrifying. More terrifying still, they are so big they can eat small whales. Whales! The first ever image of a giant squid was taken by Japanese researchers in its natural habitat, and it's believed that there are many species of giant squid exist, but as per genetics research. The largest known squid species can be seen in all oceans. However, as of right now, they have only been discovered in the Gulf of Mexico, the Sea of Japan, the Pacific Ocean, Hawaii, the Southern Oceans, and California. Giant squid can grow up to 59 feet in length, making it one of the biggest animals on the entire planet. I hate this so much. While on the topic of appearance, the giant squid has a large head with eight arms and two tentacles used for grabbing prey. Not only that, but it also has an incredibly strong jaw, similar to a parrot beak. The species are a big fan of eating other squid, fish, and shrimp, and according to different researchers, they can also attack 
humpback and eat small whales, as previously stated. I hate them. In at two, humpback anglerfish. Right off the bat, I hate anglerfish. I hate their stupid light bulb and their stupid teeth. And this dude is no different. Humpback anglerfish are perhaps the most terrifying deep sea creature you will ever come across, just because of how it looks. The species are grey to dark brown in colour and have a large head with a big crescent shaped mouth, full to the brim with sharp teeth, which are also translucent. What the f? They live up to 2,000 meters below the sea and use their light to see their prey, which is actually an antenna located on its head. They can swallow prey twice their size and use their bioluminescence that produces symbiotic bacteria when in the dark to attract them. Now, the humpback anglerfish is widely distributed in almost all oceans across the world. More interesting still, the species have a lateral line that can sense the pressure and movements in the surrounding ocean. That's too much power for my liking. Finally, coming in at number one. Frilled shark. Frilled sharks are typically found thousands of feet below surface and most commonly in the Suruga Bay area of Japan. They are very similar to sharks in the sense that they have very dangerous three pointed teeth. Known as the living fossil and mostly seen at Atlantic and Pacific Ocean, this guy is just straight up terrifying and he loves eating bony fish. He has a flattened head and an incredibly large mouth with around 300 teeth arranged in 25 rows pointing in a backward direction. His body is elongated and is brown in colour. Now, typically, Sharks don't have a nictitating membrane. That is a thin but tough membrane considered as an eyelid that moves horizontally with the eyes. However, this shark has that and uses it to protect its eyes during potentially dangerous situations. Not only that, but its skeleton also contains less calcium, likely because it lives so deep underwater, which is poor in nutrients. In at five, sirens. Hailing from Greek mythology, sirens were supposedly dangerous creatures who, according to the legend of Odysseus, the sirens would lure nearby sailors with their enchanting music music and singing, which would cause them to shipwreck on the rocky coasts of the Sirens Island. The ships would be wrecked and the sailors aboard would perish, either by drowning or slain by the Sirens themselves. However, what makes these creatures interesting is that whatever they did to their captives is unknown, but has been implied throughout mythology that they ate the unfortunate sailors. Savage. Now, when Odysseus sailed towards the island housing the sirens, he ordered his crew to tie him to the mast so that he could hear the siren songs without being led astray. Smart mans. The crew were also ordered to plug their ears with beeswax so that they could not hear. In turn, Odysseus' ship passed safely by the island. Now, these mythological monsters were believed to combine women and birds in various ways, often represented as birds with large female heads, bird feathers, and scaly feet. However, throughout history, this depicts Fiction would change, with them now being represented as female figures with the legs of birds, with or without wings, playing a variety of musical instruments, particularly harps. They have also been depicted as beautiful women whose bodies, not just their voices, are seductive. Now, According to Ovid, the sirens were the companions of a young Persephone. Demeter gave them wings to search for Persephone when she was abducted by Hades. However, Demeter would curse the sirens for failing to intervene in the abduction and were ultimately fated to live only until their their mortals who heard their songs were able to pass them by. In at four, your Manganda. Hailing from Norse mythology, your Manganda, meaning huge monster and also known as the Midgard world serpent, is a sea monster and the middle child of the giantess Angboda and Loki. Now, according to mythology, Odin took Loki's three children by Angboda, the wolf Fenrir, Hel, and your Manganda, and tossed the latter into the great ocean that encircles Midgard. The serpent then grew so large that it was able to surround the entire Earth and grasp its own tail. As a result of this, it received the name the World Serpent. When this monster releases its tail, though, Ragnarok will begin. Frightening stuff. Once the beast releases its tail, the seas will become violent as the serpent thrashes its way onto land. Fenrir will set ablaze one half of the world with fireballs, while Jormungandr sprays poison to fill the skies and seas of the other half. The two will then join the sons of Muspel into the plain of Vigrid. Here is where the last meeting between the serpent and Thor is predicted to occur. Thor will become occupied with battling Jormungandr and they will be unable to help others as they fight their own battles. Thor, however, will eventually kill the serpent, but will fall dead after walking just nine paces, having been poisoned by the serpent's deadly venom. Tragic stuff. This dude is not to be messed with. Number three, the glass octopus. A rare encounter with a glass octopus has just happened, which is one of the strangest and coolest species that swim these oceans. These science fiction looking dudes have transparent, gelatinous bodies, and scientists believe that they have evolved into their elongated shape in order to make itself next to invisible, even when right beside it. 
That's pretty cool. The only colorful parts on them are their optic nerves, eyeballs, and digestive tract. Yeah, basically like a see-through Game Boy. Remember those? About like three times the size of a Game Boy 2 at about 20 inches long. It's likely that these octopuses eat whatever is down there at the depths of the twilight zone and midnight zone. Yeah, like deep, deep. And cold. Footage of the glass octopus is super new and before this expedition, scientists had almost no documentation of the animal in the wild. That means they've mostly had to learn about it just by studying remains found in the guts of other predators. But now, thanks to the Schmidt Ocean Institute armed with close range high def videos and pictures, scientists and biologists are now able to learn a little bit more about this mysterious ghostly creature. Quote, the ocean holds wonders and promises we haven't even imagined, much less discovered. Wendy Schmidt, co-founder of Schmidt Ocean Institute. Thanks to a recent expedition in the US Pacific remote islands, the Schmidts led a 34 day trip that brought scientists together from all around the world to document deep sea creatures on deep sea mounts. See this is what I'm talking about. All the while using a remote controlled vehicle named Sebastian. I love it. I get it, Little Mermaid, I got you. Scientists observed not one, but two octopuses, adding further to more knowledge and behavior of this elusive species. The glass octopus is considered one of the least studied cephalopods in our ocean. I'm excited. Let's go 2022. So far, so good. Great year for fishes. Number two, the colossal squid. Sometimes called the Antarctic squid, or giant cranch squid, or famously known as <gasps> The Kraken. It's believed to be the largest squid species ever. It's the only member of the Mesonicothelius genus and is only known from a handful of sightings throughout history. Ah yes, the old sea captain's log, huh? The species is confirmed to reach a mass of at least 1,500 pounds, making it the largest known invertebrate on the planet. Biggest one so far is 20 meters. That's like the pitcher's mound to home plate. Yeah. This thing is massive. Though the species has similar anatomy to other squids, it's the only member to display hooks on its arms and tentacles. Okay, that's a little scary. It lives in the Antarctic and is found at depths of the twilight zone, like 2,000 meters down. Little is actually known about the creature, what it eats and what it does all the way down there. Scientists say it's bioluminescence as well, which attracts prey. Look, if this thing was flying instead of swimming, just one atmosphere difference, I'm just gonna say it, this thing would be an alien. You know what I mean? I, I said it. I mean, no wonder it's got a reputation for swallowing up ships by pirates. The first specimens were spotted in 1925, but in the early 2000s, fishermen got lucky and they pulled up the largest colossal squid ever found. It's now on display at the Museum of New Zealand. Kind of sad that when we see these beautiful things, the first thing we think is to yank them out of the water. I like the underwater cameras and free divers, Blue Planet style, just swimming down there with krakens. Okay, maybe not. Yank it up, boys. Get it up, that thing's horrifying. And the number one spot, the blood belly comb jelly. Sounds like a magical elixir. From the family Lampictenidae, this specimen was first caught and studied by George Matsumoto, the marine biologist at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, who discovered the blood belly jelly in 2003. Now we're sure these things weren't discovered on like one of Jupiter's moons or something already in the 30s. We're sure of that. Cause that thing's blinking like a you know what. Not many of these things have actually been caught though. I've never seen anything like this before. Brilliant and then seemingly electric. The bloody belly comb jelly comes in different shades of red as well. The sparkling display on the outside comes from light reflecting and refracting off tiny transparent hair-like cilia. Basically this thing is like a swimming light bright. Remember those light brights from the 90s? This thing is like the alive version of that. Of course, alongside its mystic nature, it also poops sparkles. Seriously, like a little alien unicorn. That's neat, right? Its name comes from its ruby red color. While it's pretty much invisible from underneath its belly, from above and in front, it lights up like the 4th of July, luring predators in with its mesmerizing patterns. Red is nearly invisible in the deep sea, so the vibrant crimson that gives the comb jelly its name is actually helping it hide. Blood bellies are technically xenophores, not true jellyfish. Many comb jellies have calloblasts lining their tentacles, which work like glue instead of venom. Upon touch, a spiral filament automatically bursts out and releases this sticky glue stuff. Once a fish is unable to swim away, the comb jelly reels in its tentacles and brings the food to its mouth. Um, okay, so this thing just became absolutely terrifying again. The deep dark sea, we gotta respect it. How insects and how jellyfish eat scares the out of me. I just, I can't explain it. Watch it for yourself. 